I've spent my whole life surfing competitively and following a tour schedule. I was lucky enough to see a lot of the world, but I didn't get to dive deep into different cultures until now. Now that I'm not on a tour, I've decided to make my own. And I'm the only one on it. Time is not about competing. It's about exploring, finding new ways, meeting inspiring women, experiencing different ways of life, and making my own rules as I go. Few countries have had a relationship with the sea as prolific as that of Japan. Composed of nearly 7,000 islands, the country's history and culture have been intertwined with the ocean as far back as records can trace. It's a country of multitudes and despite nearly three quarters of the land being untouched forest or mountains, Japan still boasts the busiest train station in the world, the world's largest fish market and an estimated 5 million vending machines stocked with well, just about anything you could think of. With over 18,000 miles of coastline, it's only natural that Japan's surf culture is bustling, innovative and fully original. Like most surf history goes, it was war that led to waves when American soldiers stationed in the country after World War II introduced locals to their western-made surfboards. To be fair, at this point the Japanese have been riding waves for over a century on traditional wooden boards called Itago similar to the Hawaiian Pipo. Keen to get in on the fun, we landed in Tokyo and headed straight to Chiba, one of Japan's top surf areas. Home to quaint beach towns, scattered surf shops, and what will eventually be the site of surfing's introduction to the Olympic Games. There, we met professional female surfer Shino Matsuda, who at only 17 years old is posed to represent Japan in the Games. And until then, continues to make waves around the world. From there, our journey led us all the way to Japan's southernmost tip, where we got to surf a typhoon swell in Miyazaki with one of the nation's best longboarders, Natsumi Teoka. Fueled by convenience store snacks, vending machine coffee, and the magic spell that Japan seems to cast on all of those who visit, it's safe to say our trip in Japan was one to remember. I'm Laura Enova, and welcome to Japan. Konnichiwa. Shino may appear quiet at first, but underneath the shy smile is a winning sense of humour and a fierce competitor. At only 17, a standout performance at the 2019 ISA Surfing Games provisionally locked in Shino's spot for the 2020 Olympic Games, a goal that she is still training for despite the events being postponed until next year. When you started surfing, did you ever imagine yourself possibly competing at the Olympics for surfing? オリンピックがサーフィンに決まった時は全然まだ実感イメージができてなかったけど、もう最近はすごいオリンピックが近づいて、すごいそのことにフォーカスしながら楽しんで。Shino is leading the next generation of female surfers in Japan, and she's a role model for young women everywhere, both in and out of the water. How have you seen, since you've begun surfing, uh, the change in how many girls surf in, in Japan? I think it's quite surprising that girls are she takes her training seriously and even when we shared a surf at a beach in Chiba where the Olympics were scheduled to be held, the conditions were less than desirable, but it didn't phase Shino. After our surf, it was decided that even the city itself could have better waves than the current conditions. So that's where we headed. City Wave Tokyo, a standing wave machine in the middle of the city that looked simple but in fact proved to be, well, rather challenging <laughs> for me. 
Sheena, of course, was a pro and made it look easy. And despite her best teaching efforts, I never managed to handle it as smoothly as her. Nonetheless, it was pretty amusing to be surfing deep in the middle of some of Tokyo's tallest buildings. Laura? Hello, Laura. Laura. In Japan, we take our kutsu off to eat. Language of Laura. Oishi. Tucked into the Pacific Ring of Fire and sitting directly in the path of some of the world's most forceful typhoons, Japan is no stranger to the power of nature. It turned out we arrived right on time to get a proper glimpse of just what that can look like. A group decision was made. We'd fly south to Miyazaki, where the storm itself was scheduled to miss, but the powerful swell it carried should arrive. Natsumi Teoka was keen to hop in on our split decision to head to Miyazaki for the swell. One of Japan's best longboarders, Natsumi is one of those people who is just constant sunshine. She's got a beaming smile and an infectious laugh, and it's pretty much impossible to not have fun with her. Born and raised in Chiba, Natsumi grew up in a family of surfers, and she began surfing at the age of 10. Her goal is to become the longboard world champion, and one glance at her graceful cross-stepping and confidence in solid surf says it all. Natsumi has got what it takes. The swell arrived with us, and tired as we were from the morning flight, we jumped straight into hunting for waves. The only problem was that the swell was a little too big. Even the locals weren't sure what to predict with the swell of this size, the kind that only hits once every few decades. Trying to find a wave that's big enough to break but small enough to surf, that's pretty much it. <laughs> as the brunt of the typhoon swell hit, we found ourselves with limited clean options. Most spots couldn't handle the size. Luckily, there was plenty of novelty waves to go around. decided to call it a day and try again in the morning. In Japan, we karaoke. Karaoke day with Tao Uzo. Many of the waves in Miyazaki aren't easily accessed or even seen from the road. It takes local knowledge to identify the necessary turn-offs or precarious parking spots. Phones lost service and were eventually put away and forgotten. We took joy in chasing a swell the old-fashioned way, by word of mouth and pulling over at any side of what looked like a rideable wave. Eventually, the energy of the swell passed and we were greeted with a very different looking Miyazaki. Tranquil seas, a light breeze in the clear sky. Even the air seemed to settle, and it seemed very fitting that our time in Japan was nearing its end. We were grateful for what felt like a gift that disappeared as quickly as it arrived. Japan has a truly special knack for making you feel simultaneously thrust into the future while also flung far, far back into the past. And what does that have to do with surfing in Japan? Well, looking at Natsumi and Shino, these are young, innovative women who reflect all of the beauty and tradition of their country, who also happen to be shaping and redefining what the future of surfing will look like for women in Japan. My time with Shino and Natsumi showed me how much more there is to see, and that maybe having no plan became the best plan of all. Japan, it was far too brief. We'll be seeing you again soon.